Hey golfers, and welcome back to the Second Swing Thoughts podcast. Today we've got a really good one. We're talking about the AT&T Byron Nelson Championship, uh, the Founders Cup on the LPGA as well, and then of course this next coming week is the PGA Championship, so uh, we'll have some discussion on that. But first we've got to talk about the tour van fittings. Um, golfers playing better does not have to come from hours and hours of practice. Optimized equipment could be all you need to shoot lower scores. At Second Swing, our award-winning master fitters use state-of-the-art technology. We're in world-class training and knowledge to dial in golfers every single day. Whether you're a beginner, a seasoned pro, or anything in between, you will save strokes with a Second Swing at Tour Van fitting. So schedule that fitting today at secondswing.com. Um, today we have uh, another special guest. So if you've been following the Second Swing blog at all, uh, you've probably read a Sunday swing. We've been doing them weekly now. Uh, well, they're posting on Mondays. You're writing them up on Sundays, I know. Correct. Um, and we finally get them up Monday mornings. But um, so Pierce has been the brains behind Sunday swing. He writes them up, summarizes the action from both PGA Tour and LPGA Tour from the weekend. So uh, Pierce Lanou, that's the last. That's, that's how you correct. pronounce it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. First so try, very good. Pierce Lanou. So tell us. I mean, tell the people about yourself. How much golf do you play? Where? Oh, you know, all those man, not enough. Gritty details. Not enough golf. Um, <laughs> right? I get out once, twice a week on a good week. Yeah. I mean, that's a pretty good um, week, though. Yeah, you know, I, I yeah. usually try to play once during the week. Yeah. Maybe a weeknight after work okay. and then get one in uh, on Saturday or right. Sunday. But that's, I mean, if I get that for the week, I feel pretty good about it. Yeah, myself. I'm thrilled. You know? I'm yeah. thrilled with that these days. So, um, so what we've been doing, uh, the listeners of the show know this, we're going to do a little rapid fire to kind of get let's do it let yeah. the let the listeners get to know you a little bit let's fire so, away um if you were to play golf with go, play golf in a foursome who would you, dream foursome three other people with you who you got oh boy could that's be a, that's a past loaded, or present you know yeah that's a loaded question it is a loaded question um i think i have to say tiger woods yeah yeah i think uh you'd probably have to fire me if i didn't say tiger woods <laughs> um so we'll go tiger i'm not like the a diehard Rory McIlroy fan, but I, I think I would throw Rory in there too, just because yeah. watching him play golf is, it's just unbelievable the way he hits the ball. Yeah. Um, seeing that in person is, is special the way he drives mm-hmm. it. So I I'd think go, I would also be fascinated by just him being. I think he's like five eight. Yeah, he's super he short. Hit farther yeah. than almost everybody. Yeah, it's <laughs> so it's that part wild. I'd be I'd love to see in person. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I'd probably say Tiger, Rory. Man, I feel like I need. I feel like I need some more some more personality in there. Maybe we we do like a like a Jordan Spieth. Oh yeah, there's personality. Yeah, there. yeah. It's also you get to watch some interesting shots. I'm sure. Yeah, well, given the way he plays. Just <laughs> he 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 has something to say after every shot he hits. So yeah, yeah. We need be, uh, I need you eavesdropping on the convos with yeah. Ian Grell, oh, yeah. you know, uh, on every shot. That'd be good. Yeah, yelling at his ball. I mean, yeah, that the works. Entertainment plus yeah, know, watching good golf plus the conversations between those three individuals and then you get to kind of jump in on those two probably yeah. ask some questions that'd be fun yeah um so i also ask everybody what their favorite club that they have in their bag is right now um your most trustworthy club if you will okay that's an easy one for me it's the titleist tsr3 driver oh brand new brand new yeah just just got it uh, a few weeks ago so i've only played maybe six seven rounds of it so far yeah. but starting to get it dialed in yeah it's, it's fun well, that I know the fitters. We did. I did a little bit of um, field research, if you will, and I asked a bunch of fitters. Did a little uh, survey and Google surveys or whatever it is, and I just just asking the fitters their top performing, yeah, you know, clubs in each category. And the TSR drivers were, mm-hmm. you know, one or two for everybody. Yeah. Well, I was playing the category. TSI before. Oh, okay. And so the switch was really nothing. You know, nothing felt different, but. I I just couldn't like the TSI three when I was hitting that I didn't think it could get any better. Yeah. And then I was hitting the TSR. And is it just more? Is it faster? Is it more? It's stable? faster. Yeah. yeah. Both. It's <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. That new uh, that new Tensei Black, mm. the one K Black oh, yeah. shaft. Yeah. It's very similar to the white that they used to do, but looks a lot cleaner. Mm-hmm. It's like that matte finish, right. all black. It's yeah. solid. I love that. The thing is, man. and I've. I've been very tempted. I've had a Sim 2 in the bag for a couple of years now. I've been very tempted in the testing with TSR 2 or 3, one yeah. or two. They're both to, good. Yeah. To put it in the bag. Um, all right. This is always a fun one, too. So, um, this and the menu for a champion's dinner, should you hypothetically win the Masters tournament? Okay. Well, that won't be hypothetical. 
<laughs> um, when I win the Masters. I love that. The Champions Dinner will probably have some, store, some sort of steak as the main entree. Okay. Um, I'm not really a ribeye guy, too much fat for me, but I'd probably do like some strips or um, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, broccoli. Oh, okay. Broccoli is my favorite vegetable. Got to have broccoli with your how steak. Do you, how do you make it? Um, usually just in the, in the frying pan at home. A okay. um, little bit of oil, a little bit of butter. Nice. I, I let them cook a little bit, season them a little bit, and then once it starts to get get a little hot, yeah. you start to get that that little brown on there. You sure. put just a couple dashes of water in there, let it steam up. Okay. Perfect. This guy knows what he's it's doing. Perfect every time. Um, then I'd probably do a potato of some kind. Probably just go with mashed potatoes. Maybe mm -hmm. some mac and cheese in there too. I, this all sounds great. Dude. Yeah, <laughs> mac and cheese, potatoes, broccoli, steak. Dessert, what do we got for dessert? Uh, I'd probably have to go with some sort of, some sort of ice cream, maybe yeah. ice cream cake. Okay. We'll just have Dairy Queen ice cream cakes. Yeah. I should stop Augusta. asking people these questions because I get really, really <laughs> hungry. So. But no, that was hey, I, I'm a big mac and cheese guy and a big mashed potatoes guy. Yeah. So you you yeah. passed the, the test with flying colors there. Can't go wrong with those. Um, yeah. So, a preface to this next one: Do you have or have you ever made a hole in one before? <laughs> no. Okay, that's not no. the that's not the 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 end all be all. Because I'm asking is so, and I guess I should ask also: Have you made an albatross before? Nope. No. So which one would you rather have first? I'll take the hole in one. Okay. Because, actually, no, I take that back. I'll take the albatross. Okay. I think the albatross takes a lot more skill. I think you're right. Um, and no offense, but I know some people that have hole in ones that. No, have no have no business having them. <laughs> yeah, my grandma. <laughs> granted, she she's a great golfer. Um, my mother-in-law has a hole in one. Okay. Um, my brother has a hole in one. So it really sounds like you're you have some FOMO. Yeah. You know, no holes in one yet. Yeah. Uh, I'm with you though on the on the skill thing though. Yeah. The albatross. They're more rare. Yeah. And then also sure. if it's a if it's a two and a par five. Yeah. There's no, you know, the, the tradition of buying drinks and. Right. In the clubhouse afterwards. Right. You don't have to worry about that. Yeah. Um, so, all right. I always, I've, I've heard so many different answers to that question, even though it's usually just a one or the other. Yeah, right off the bat, new I want to say hole in one. Yeah. But if you think about it, then it's like, yeah, I think I'd go with the albatross. Because I know I would prefer an albatross. Yeah. I know it's a, I'm not, obviously a scorecard thing is, you know, you're more under par with one. I, I thought I made an albatross in a round I was playing on Friday. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It, um, it did not go in. Did you make eagle? I did. Okay. Yes. Well, eagles are good. Yeah, it was, eagles about, are good. it was about three feet. But from, more, from my vantage point, I took a hop, I was rolling at the flag, so and I lost. There was a little slope there. I lost it, and I'm jumping up and down. Did that go say, in? The, the heart's probably racing a little <laughs> yeah. bit there as you yep. go up to the hole without a, without a clear answer. Yeah. So we're still, we're still knocking still on searching. the door. Yeah. Well, you'll get there. You'll get there. It happens. I mean, odds are. People, you play so much golf. I mean, two rounds a week is not... A ton, but it's yeah. plenty of golf to. Well, that's you know. only five months out of the year, though. That's, I you got to remember. Don't, we don't remind me. I'm in the same boat. It's annoying. But yep. um, okay, so we have some PGA Tour to talk about here. Yeah, let's uh, do it. So the Byron Nelson and you know the field was not. I mean, it was it was solid for mm -hmm. what isn't. I mean, it seems like there's you know you have your designated elevated events that obviously obviously get a really good field, yep. all the stars, and then. The, the events that aren't elevated, it sometimes can struggle to get the big names, but you had a, a fair amount of yeah. big names in this event. So, yep. um, but Jason Day, we got to start there with oh, the winner. Man. Yeah. It's what fantastic. a performance. And yeah. it's been a long time coming for mm -hmm. him, for sure. Yeah. It was really, um, I didn't realize how f like big of a full circle moment that was for him mm -hmm. yesterday. Because um, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was 10 years ago that he. His first victory was at the Byron I Nelson. That, I think it was. Back yeah. in 2013. Yeah, you're right. um, and just, man, yeah, the, the things he's gone through. I mean, mm -hmm. 2015 and 2016, he was... He was unstoppable. Unbeatable, yeah. it seemed like. Yeah. Um, I think he was number one in the world for 50-some odd weeks, which was... It's like he's top 10 on longest stretches of being number one in the world. I know that for sure. Um, and then, you know... After 2016, he started having the injury issues. Mm -hmm. um, the, well, he had the vertigo issues. Right. Um, and that's kind of been flaring up again. He's yeah. been dealing with that some more. Um, 
He, yeah, I remember in like 2019, 2020, I think, he was getting like cortisone shots it's, in the middle of his rounds. Right, just to like he would, you'd watch him, he'd be like, he'd have a trainer or somebody yeah. with him like working on his back or yeah. working on something mid, mid know, waiting for the tee shot, yeah. you know. Uh, so, and you, you, do, you do think like, especially the way he was swinging back mm -hmm. in his prime, you would just rip at the ball. Yeah. You could set, tell there was some stress on the back. Back but, issues for golfers are right. I mean, they're not good. A, a pro at that level and the practice they yeah. put in, there had so, so many swings every yeah. day. That, yeah. um, I'm, I'm sure, you know, the way that it's becoming a, a speed game, uh, mm -hmm. so much about is how far can I hit the ball, how much swing speed can I generate, yep. but, you know, at what cost? And we saw some of that with Bryson and the injuries he's had, mm -hmm. his chase for distance. So day was yeah. probably a bit of a microcosm of that. Yeah, but. for sure. And then, I mean, I think it was last year he lost his mom. Mm -hmm. It was within. It was the last well, I year. I suppose that, that was a Mother's Day. Yeah, it was either the last thing. year or the year before, um, and so yeah. I mean, he was very open about mm -hmm. how that affected him, and yeah, I think yesterday getting the win on Mother's Day just, I think it meant a little bit more right. to him. That was that's very um, cool. And having his family there, and yeah, yeah, he's just he's such a good guy. Oh yeah, um, so easy to root for. By the way, I, I when I was watching yesterday, and, and it, is it his oldest son? Is it Dash? Dash. Dash. Yeah. Dash. Yep. This always makes he, me think of the Incredibles. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes. Um, I didn't. I couldn't. Re I didn't realize it was him because he's he's tall. Like yeah, he's, he's like an old, like an older. I kid feel now. like I haven't seen him since the the major that day one right. back in twenty fifteen. He was like you know a little top. He came running out on the green. Yeah, he's so small. And then yeah, yesterday I saw him. I'm like, is that Dash? Like yeah. man, I guess you know that's that was eight, eight how years old is ago. Day now thirty six. Thirty five. Thirty five. Okay, yeah. so he's. I mean, it, it's just it's. Time flies. I don't yeah. know. I, you, yeah. it, was, it was not that long ago, and Dash yeah. was that. It does not feel like high. it's been eight years since that that tournament, but here we are. Yeah. But I mean, and it's he had been trending too. Like I think a lot of people oh. that were following, you know, yep. I mean, how many? I think in the Sunday swing you said he had twelve. Was it twelve top twenty fives? Yeah, twelve 10? top twenty fives, and I think like seven top tens and sixteen this starts year, right? this year, something like that. Yeah, season, I only so. missed like two or three cuts. Um, yeah, he's been. He's been knocking on the door mm -hmm. for a while now. So yeah, that was it wasn't a surprise to anybody that had been following him. Yeah. To suddenly see him up there. I mean it was the way to do it though, that's that mm -hmm. final round sixty two. That's <laughs> not that's not too yeah. bad. Yeah. Throwing I, a dart I, on the last hole for the for I didn't see it coming. Birdie. I mean I didn't sixty two on Sunday is that's no joke. Yeah. Well And it was rainy, it was yeah. the weather wasn't ideal, but I suppose it softens the course up and those guys, I mean a little bit of rain doesn't. Right. Doesn't there was a lot so, of looking back at the leaderboard, 63, 64s yeah. yesterday. Yep. Yep. Um, I think Day and uh, CT Pan. Mm -hmm. I think was the other guy that yep. had 62. Those Both made the, those. I think late those charges. were the. I think those were the two low guys yesterday. But. And then one thing I wanted to mention too was his bag because you don't see a lot anymore of mm -hmm. guys that are equipment free agents. Yeah, these are my favorite. And yeah. because then you get a mix of brands and you mm -hmm. kind of see like. To me, the the peop when you put a club in the bag as an equipment free agent, that means more obviously than yeah. if you're just on staff. Right. And so like him playing the G430 LST driver or playing, you know, a TaylorMade uh, P770 and MC irons, that to me means more. Yeah. Uh, just because he's an equipment free agent. Yeah. There's you know, a few guys yeah. that have done that over the years and have been consistent with that. Mm -hmm. But I know Day recently. I know he was a TaylorMade. Yeah. I he guess was. in his prime. Yeah. Um, I but, think he's been a free agent for a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. He's been. He's been changing it up a lot. Right. Well, I know and he's you had a bunch of different the, putters. The putters, yeah. Um, but he's got that vintage, itsy bitsy spider yeah. back in the bag. I remember watching him when he came back when he came out on tour. I think like the first few years, like it seemed like every year at the Masters, this Jason Day guy was mm -hmm. like all of a sudden right there. And I remember he had that white spider that he used right. to putt with. Yep. And um, I remember white golf clubs. Yeah. What a yep. what an era that was for like yeah. two or three years. They still and exist. They do. Yeah. They, to, they do. Um, and there's actually some on tour still. I, a lot of like the rocket balls, fairy woods, and stuff like that. Yeah. The RBZs. Yeah. Um, yep. And then, uh, like, well, because you mentioned the the putters, but he has been tinkering with other. I, I believe the top of the bag too. He didn't mm -hmm. have. I mean, he's got an older three wood. The yeah. Max is considered yep. old now. Sim Max. Yeah. And I didn't know he was playing the ping driver either. Yeah. I didn't. So, I didn't either until I saw it Sunday. Yeah. I was, I was just, oh. I was yeah. I, not that I knew what he was playing, but I right. just, you know. So uh, kudos, mm -hmm. I guess. To I mean, that means something for Ping to get that in the bag as a yeah. for someone's a free agent. Also, obviously with Taylor made. And then I think it's also worth noting every seems like every equipment free agent has Vokey wedges. Yeah, and yeah. even some that aren't free agents that might have deals with 
they, they sneak brand. one in the they bag. They sneak Vokey wedges yep. in the bag. I see a lot of those lob wedges, the, the wedge works yeah. lob wedges. Yeah, where it's basically yeah. like, here, Mr. Vokey, build me a wedge that works. <laughs> mm -hmm. And he does yeah. it. Those are sweet. Yeah. So I think there's probably something there to the Vokey wedges being yeah. really, really good. Well, I play Vokey wedges myself, so. So you can attest to yeah. how good they are. So, yeah, they're and good. Jason Day throwing a dart on the last hole with yeah, no that mistake, was nice. probably. Yeah. So uh, another one you wanted to mention was uh, Austin Eckroat. Yeah. And I mean, so I've kind of had my eye on him because I was following the college golf loosely coming yeah. up, uh, or I guess the past couple of years. Um, and he hasn't really, I guess, it had taken a while for him really to kind of mm -hmm. contend in a tournament. And this was really the first time. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, he, or his rounds are they all 65s or something like that? It was something crazy. He had a bunch yeah, they of were all mid 60s, yeah. I believe. Uh, really impressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's I think what 24, 25 years old, yeah. something like that. Um, so he had like 35 people in his family watching. Yeah, <laughs> he had a yeah, whole crowd with him. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, one of the first uh, to come kind of from that new PGA Tour University mm -hmm. system that they got going. Um, obviously, he ended up. I think he ended up one shot, one shot short. Um, but yeah, I was I was so impressed with the way he oh, hit yeah. the ball this week. Uh, under those circumstances, I mean, he wasn't. Normally, you think of the Byron Nelson, and and you think the field's probably not very strong. But like we talked about earlier, there's some big names. Oh yeah, well you had Scotty number, Scheffler was number up two there. in the world. Tyrrell Hatton. Tyrrell the Hatton charge. was up there. Yep. Um, obviously, Day with the win. You know, he's yeah. he's a proven winner. Uh, Siwoo Kim, Adam another Scott, guy that yeah, another Adam Scott. So, yeah, so. It's, you have guys that have had prolific careers. Yeah, and it was it was no ordinary non-designated event, right. I guess. Yeah, and so. that and for him, a player like him too, um, with with kind of where he was in the rankings before this week, that that second place finish is oh, yeah. is huge. Right. So because I think there's there's a glamorous side to the PGA Tour and a non-glamorous side, but the mm -hmm. non-glamorous side is probably more <clears throat> entertaining or fulfilling, I yeah. guess, for like someone like us to watch, where we're like. Can this guy get in the top 125? Right. Or now with the new yeah. uh, designated events kind of criteria, the top 50 is going to be a big deal next yep. year. Yep. So, yep. 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 Um, I think if he gets inside top 50 this season, which he's now like mid 70s after mm -hmm. this week, I think top 50 gets him into all of the full field events next year. Right. So it's a big deal because yeah. these guys, keeping your tour card is not. You know, it's no laughing matter. I mean, no. It's, no. It's a very. It's it's your livelihood. And yeah. So you, can go from, you can go from making yeah. a lot of money to, mm -hmm. you know, kind of almost scraping by, if you will, if you're trying to, if you're a middling corn fairy player, it's yeah. not like life is easy out there. Right. Yeah. So. And that's, I think, did you watch the Full Swing documentary? Oh, I did. oh absolutely. Yeah. The Damon episode I mm -hmm. thought was super cool. Um, and one of the things I love that he said in there was like, someone's got to be 146 in the world or whatever. Why not me? <laughs> right. What even takes <laughs> yeah, you back? I think it was... Kisner maybe a few mm -hmm. years ago made a comment or yeah. he said uh, 20 pays really well yeah that's what it was place. I think they're at Torrey Pines and the guy asked yeah. him if he could win and Kisner's like no <laughs> and he's like well, what are you doing here he's like well they pay a lot of money for 20 yeah <laughs> so yeah yeah that uh, was it yeah but it, it doesn't seem like as a fan you're like well why would somebody think that way right it's like well these this is their job yeah this is their livelihood and for all so many of these players you know a top 20 or a mm -hmm. top 10 is a very very good successful yeah. week both for their own game yep. and, and emotional stat status but also just financially yeah it's a big deal oh, yeah especially yeah. as these purses go way way up a mm -hmm. um, couple other notes we talked about Scotty um, really just the, the third round it's kind of all, the only reason he didn't win this tournament yeah uh, um, we know we don't have any <laughs> yeah, doubts man. with with his game and no you know. it's just you, you don't even like think about it anymore it's like oh Scotty's in the field yeah like he's gonna contend yeah it's well just... and I was following the uh, he was like he was like minus odds to win Six holes into the tournament. Yes, yeah, so he, he was six under through six <laughs> holes six on Thursday. Six. And I'm just like, are you kidding me? We're like, here we like, go. Do I have to watch the rest of this yeah. anymore? Um, yeah. So Ridiculous. That, I actually thank him for that third round and kind mm -hmm. of having a tough one because then we could make Sunday entertaining. Oh, it was so, so. entertaining. <laughs> yeah, I think at the turn on Sunday, there was like seven guys at 19 under, something yeah. like that. I mean, it was... Yeah. Because then you had, um, uh, oh, what was the name? Uh, Do. Do. Yeah, Marty Do. Do. Do? I think it's Do. I thought it was Dow. I think um, they and were, then I heard them on had, the broadcast. I heard, a, I heard a few different pronunciations uh, yeah, on the broadcast, so yeah, I think they were wrong. guessing yeah, as much as we are. Yeah, wrong, okay. But, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. He, uh, but he's a I young Chinese he was, player. Yeah. He looked like he was going to take hold of it, and then he had the double on eight. But, yeah, he kind of gives me uh, Tom Kim vibes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing yeah. what he can do the rest of 
well, I guess the rest of this season and mm -hmm. see what kind of starts. Because this is when, as these majors come up, then there's sort of these non-designated events sort of sandwiched in between them a yeah. bit. So I'm sure we'll see his name a little more. Yeah, I'm sure we will. And I think he's popped up a couple times earlier in the year, too, on leaderboards. But, yeah, mm -hmm. this week was, was big for him, too. I think he finished top five. So Yeah, that's, that's a huge. big one for him. Yeah. Um, so Adam Scott and Tyrrell Hatton were a couple guys I had mm -hmm. noted here, too. Just strong finishes. And, again, it's yeah. like it's – to me, it seems like when you get a bigger name like those guys in these non-designated events, they don't bring their best stuff, but then they just show up in the top ten. Yeah. Um, so I think that, to me, that's the difference between like a star on the tour and mm -hmm. someone that's grinding for that top 125 right. or top 50. Yeah. Is their best not when they don't have their best stuff, they're still on the fringe of contention. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure if you ask Scotty Scheffler if, if he thought he played had his A game this week, he'd probably say no. I actually, <laughs> I actually was on the broadcast. I remember he had the interview with Bellionis, mm. uh, man of Renner, actually. Renner, yeah. And um, he said, like, yeah, I didn't strike the ball well this week. <laughs> and yeah. it's like, dude, you shot 20, didn't strike the ball well, 20 21 under, 20 whatever under. it was. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a different game they play, that's for sure. Um, I had one other note, too, and that was Siwoo Kim, mm -hmm. strong finish. But also, did you see the shirt he was wearing? Yeah. <laughs> the big yeah, yesterday. The what was that? <laughs> I, so I know he has a clothing deal with PGA Tour yeah. Apparel. Yeah, yeah. Was that what that? I'm assuming that's what that I'm was. I'm assuming that's what it was, but I know it wasn't Puma, and I know it wasn't Pierce. So <laughs> <Right>. it, was, <laughs> right. it was. I think it was probably a PGA Tour. It has to be something, or maybe it was like the play, like the players. Yeah. Associate. I don't know. Well, did you but, see him at the Masters when he was paired with? Um, was he was paired Phil? with live guys. Right? He was paired with a, a live guy. I think it was Phil. Yeah, and it had the shirt that said PGA Tour all over it. All over it, everywhere. PGA Tour, PGA Tour, PGA uh, Tour. That's the. I need to I need to learn the details of that. I love Siwoo Kim or that yeah, uh, apparel he's, deal. He's awesome. Oh man. Um, okay, so we'll get back to the men's game shortly um, when we talk the PGA Championship. But we should quickly pivot to the women's game, the Founders Cup. Yeah. Um, yeah. We kind of got one. a fun little Sunday showdown. Another one, yeah. Between I think Jin Young Ko and Minji Lee. So yeah. um, I always find it. It always. Uh, escapes my brain that Minwoo Lee and Minji Lee are siblings. I know. I always, yeah, they're brother but, sister. Yeah. Yeah, but obviously a lot of call, a lot of talent in that. Yeah. In that family. No kidding. Um, I think Min Woo was in the field at the Byron Hills. I mm -hmm. think he missed the cut this week. But um, yeah, Minji, she was. I mean, she had that tournament. Right. In the palm of her hand, it seemed like just until yeah. the last couple of holes there, kind of kind of slipped away from her. But right, and then Jin Young Ko. So she's won that now three of the last five years yeah every and, odd year. and i was thinking about that stat too and i'm pretty sure they missed a year because of covid oh they probably did so i'm pretty sure three of her last four starts in that tournament she's won so well, that's pretty good i'll remember that next year yeah placing bets for yeah the, for the founders cup you know. jin young ko yeah, yeah i mean it's and so um that mean and they, wait did they, they did go to a playoff they right? did they yeah did. yeah because um, that's where she, yeah minji lee was just kind of reeling the whole back nine and yeah obviously that kind of carried into yeah the she, i think she made a late bogey on 16 and then parred the last two well i think co needed birdie to force the playoff yeah. and yeah and um yeah. so jin young co now second win of the year mm -hmm. um can very easily vault back up to number one here soon with a couple more you know really good performances yeah um, i haven't checked the rankings there. yet today i wonder if if that's changed at all, the, the top three. I think it's Corda. Um, Corda was one, Nelly Corda. Yeah. And then um, number two is, I think, Lydia Ko. Mm -hmm. And then Jin Young Ko is th third. Okay. So, yeah, I wonder if that'll that'll switch around at all. I haven't looked today. But, yeah, if, and she, it's crazy. These these top these top tier players, like these big name players, whether it's men or women, I mean, when they're playing well, they just have that, they just have a different look to them. Yeah. And, and when I was watching the... It's the, like a swagger. Yeah, like Rory's got, you know, he's got yeah. that bounce. And he's <laughs> playing does. well. Yeah. Tiger's just got that look like... Like nothing's going to fade yeah, he, yeah, he's they're just so locked in. And that's how that's exactly how Jin Young looked all mm -hmm. Sunday. She didn't make a bogey right. on Sunday. That'll, bogey that'll for 67. That'll work. That'll Especially play. when you're trying to come from behind and, and yeah. a, in a big event like that mm -hmm. and come back to win. Because the uh, scoring was relatively difficult in that event. Yeah. I mean, nobody went, you know, stupid I think, low. I think 13 under was yeah. was so, the number to get into the playoff. So. I mean, that that tells me throughout the week, you know, shooting even par, shooting a couple under was a really good round mm -hmm. for a lot of those players. So yeah, I'm I'm interested to see what she does the rest of the year. Because mm -hmm. uh, two years ago when she was number one, she was it she was winning like every tournament she teed it up in. Right. So I wonder if this is kind of a yeah a little 
I don't Maybe. want to call it a resurgence because she hasn't really fallen off. Right. It's she almost just hasn't like, been winning as yeah. much as what well, we kind of come to way, expect. So. In a little bit, it's kind of like the men's game in the sense that like these, there's just so many studs yeah. that you know, a player gets really hot, like mm. the Rom and this year, Scheffler last year, and actually a couple, you know, a little bit this year too. Yeah. Like they have each other on stretch, but yeah. it just happens. It's it's impossible to stay winning that yeah, much because it really of is. how much talent yeah. there is. Yeah. So uh, I think that's where maybe the difference you see from talk about, you know, how dominant Tiger was in his prime. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, there wasn't the the level of talent and superstardom that there is now yeah. that, that could even threaten him. He was just right. that much better than everybody else all the time, even if he yeah. had his B game. Yeah. So. Which, speaking of one little, little quick thing that I, did you know Byron Nelson won 11 straight tournaments? <laughs> yes, I did. I mean, well, actually, I saw that from your note. Yeah. And then he was at a season. He had a one eighteen of 30, eighteen of thirty events, which <laughs> is nuts. Mm -hmm. um, Speaks volumes to just yeah the caliber. Of I don't think Tiger did that. No, Tiger maybe won seven or eight in a row or something his, like that. I think that. his best. Well, I think his best season was like yeah eight or nine wins something like yeah. that. Yeah. Ridiculous. Byron Nelson, one of, almost a forgotten name, kind of, yeah. of like the. Legends of, of golf. Mm -hmm. um, I know you mentioned in, in the Sunday Swing that there's now two events really named after. Yeah, he's player. one of two. Yep, him and Arnold. And then yeah. Arnold. And you know, I, I don't think anybody would object if like Jack Nicklaus changed it the memorial to his name. Yeah, the Jack um, Nicklaus. Or open, maybe we'll get yeah. there with Tiger and the Genesis or something. Yeah. But yeah. As of right now, we got two of them. So, mm -hmm. um, one other note too was Nelly Corda. Um, yeah. So this is me being, I don't know. I, I'm being devil's advocate, if you will, but mm -hmm. I wonder if the equipment switch is maybe oh, part yeah. of the reasons that she has struggled a little bit this year. Yeah, I mean, maybe. she went. I think she's, it was she's tailor made now, ago. right? Yeah, she yep. was. She was on Team Titleist. Went over to Tailor Made. Yeah. Um, now again, I that's just me throwing out a theory. Yeah, it certainly could play a factor. Because you do see that stuff. You know, yeah. players have to adjust, and it's not sometimes like this most seamless transition yeah when they do yeah. that yeah so. i mean yeah definitely even even me when i switch from the tsi to the tsr while it feels pretty much the same if there's still kind of a kind of a transition you have to make mentally i think right um especially with the, i mean the just the look of taylor made versus titleist and yeah, having no, tested yeah. them i know they're they're very different clubs very different brands and like um you know aesthetics to to see yeah those look, look a lot at, different so. sound a lot different um, so I, again I that's just a theory but I mean no yeah I'm with I, you there obviously I, she's got the prettiest swing I think in all of golf yeah. in the entire sport if so. I could swing half as good as as Nelly I'd be yeah. I'd be pretty happy yeah that's so I mean I don't think we're gonna we're saying be totally like scared of what Nelly's gonna no. you know yeah I'm not worried off. I'm not worried about Nelly Corda I think. Uh, I think she'll find her stride here mid-season, and I, yeah. I'm predicting a, I'm predicting a hot finish, a hot summer for Nelly Corda. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's not a hot take, I guess, because yeah. <laughs> you know, she is still awesome <laughs> at the game. So. Absolutely, yeah. Um, all right, PGA Championship. Mm. We gotta talk. Yeah, um, let's do it. Because, I mean, it's, I think it's one of the. So I, I was looking at kind of going back in the research and stuff, but this tournament has been awesome entertainment-wise for. A long time now going mm -hmm. back to JT then you had in 2018 you had Brooks holding off Tigers charge oh, on Sunday I was so bummed um, you had and then the next year Brooks led commanding in commanding fashion and then DJ almost came from yeah. behind and got him yeah um, the 2020 year was no fans but that was Morikawa's yeah that chip 16, in there for that drive on and 16 the, yes, oh. and then the drive on 16 in the par 4 yeah so obviously 2021 was Phil doing the yeah you know out of absolutely nowhere. Yeah, the magic act. That. Yeah, the rabbit out of the hat. Right. Per and then se. Last year you had kind of the Mito Pereira. Uh, oh, the meltdown. Meltdown and JT come from behind. Yeah, seven shot comeback, I think. When on he Sunday. had, I mean, he would probably tell you he had no business or thought he had no business winning yeah. that event. And then here we are. So I'm preparing myself mentally for an entertaining weekend. Of, absolutely. Of golf. And, um, and now these majors are even more entertaining because. These are the only events that the PGA guys get to play with the live guys. Yeah. And that that storyline in itself is is so fun to watch. Oh, I know. Because you know they know you know they want to beat each other. Right. Well, and you know, like I, I, I think there's some of the guys are obviously more vocal about things than others, but 
you know a little bit of them. Maybe someone like like DJ's not really worried about it. He's yeah. probably just like I'm. He does golf care. tournament. Yeah, which he just won by the way. He last did. Week. He yeah. did. Um, so you know he's probably not worried as as much. But there's a little element I'm sure to some of these live guys that for sure like maybe Taylor Gooch, who's mm-hmm. you know I deserve to be here. You yeah. Know, these wins that I've gotten on the, on the live yeah. circuit are not a joke. So this is where they can prove it. Yeah. Though, right. In, in these yeah. Events. It's it's and certainly going to be a good one. Obviously, you've got all the all the top guys in the field. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. So I wanted to do a little bit of trivia. Um, so the the PGA Championship was at Oak Hill 10 mm-hmm. years ago. Um, the winner, I'll give you this part. So I, I wanted you well, I, I wanted to have won. you I wanted to ha- have you guess the uh, the top 10 from that yeah. year. Um, we've got some names that are familiar, some okay. a couple names that aren't so familiar. Yeah. But well, Oak Hill by the way, fantastic course. Yeah. I can't yeah. wait to watch. It'll be awesome. Um, so give me as many as you can, the names of who finished in the top okay. 10 in 2013. Well, I know Hill. Duffner won, yep. correct? Yes. And um, and I think that was kind of the, the Duffner-Keegan era. I think the next year, Keegan beat Duffner in a playoff or something. And I think Keegan so, definitely won a PGA in that time. Yeah, I think it was... Can't remember what year exactly I think it, exactly they kind of reversed. Like, I think Keegan... I'm going to say Keegan was in the top 10 in 2013. I could be wrong. Um, but he not, was not, okay. actually. Let me, I should actually go find out. <clears throat> but I know, I remember, I think, uh, I think Jim Furyk yeah. was like in one of the final groups. Yep. He was, he was actually runner up. So. Yeah. Um, and then Stenson, I remember too. Mm-hmm. And then Day, obviously, I think he was top 10. I, I yep. know that because I, I threw so, that in the, in the Sunday swing this week. Yep. So it was um, Duffner at 10 under, one by two. Yeah. Furyk was in the last group. Eight under total. Okay. Stenson was third at seven, and then you have Day, who was T eight. Yeah. And he, actually, the the group of players at T eight is all pretty notable names. Yeah. Was, Day is one. Um, uh, I don't remember. Was Rory up there? He was. Yeah. He was also T eight. Okay. Um. Two other Americans with Day at at three under. How about Ricky? Ricky was not. Ricky was close. He was nineteenth. Okay. Keegan was 19th as well, so okay. you weren't you weren't yeah. losing your mind on that one. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I can remember too many more of them. Yeah, I what mean, did I get for? a couple of these other ones are. I'm actually, I'll give you one. Jonas Blixt. Blixt. That's one of them. How about the the show from the the Swedens? Yeah, the, the Swedes. Swedish in this game. Maybe that's a narrative tournament. to look at this week. Yeah, seven under from Stenson, six under from Blixt, third and fourth. Um, one that actually I looked back and I was like, he was still playing at this time. David Toms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was solo wow. seven. Wow! What a what a tournament for him. Yeah. Um, someone we already talked about was T five Adam Scott. Okay. So yeah. maybe another that one to watch this week. Twenty thirteen was a good year for yeah. him. He that's right. He had won the, the he won jacket. Augusta. Yeah. Um, another one that uh, familiar for us maybe having well paid attention to the three M Open last year. Scott Piercy mm. was T five. Yeah. He yeah. Had he, the three M Open by the jaws yeah. last year. Uh, I can't believe he lost that tournament. And then the other two guys at T8 were Dustin Johnson and Zach Johnson. Mm, Could Johnsons. not get more different playing styles out of those two. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> You're telling me. So yeah. that's your top ten from then. I don't know how many of those guys are actually in the field this week. I imagine David Toms is not. I would assume not, but... Um, Duffner, I'm not sure know. if he is. I saw Y.E. Yang was in the field this week, so... So I imagine Duffner has to be if... If it's, yeah. a, it's a winning, if you've won the tournament before, yeah. you're in it type I'm thing. I'm sure you're, you're in, yeah. So Duffner's probably in. Fierick, probably not. Um, I wouldn't think so. Dustin Johnson's playing. Jason Day's playing. Yeah. Rory's playing. So you'll have some of those names to, to watch for. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious to see how Day feeds off this win, if he can carry mm-hmm. the momentum over. Because obviously, top 10 there in 2013. Right. He, he knows how to play the golf course. And that was before he had this, I mean, before he knew how to win yeah. like Yeah, this, that, was before, you know? that was before all the wins. So yeah. I'm, really, I'm really interested to see what he does this week. And then we have to talk about just the Rom Scheffler dynamic. Because mm-hmm. um, I think it was, it was almost as if at Augusta, Rom was like overlooked. Because yeah. everybody was talking about Rory and talking yeah. about Scotty. Yeah. And then... You know, Rom came out of nowhere and, well, not really came well, out of nowhere. He, Rom, four putts for double right. from the first hole at Augusta. And I'm like, wow, is John Rom finally going to take a week off? And then and he then, actually tied for the low round. Of yeah, the I think he birdies nine <laughs> of the next 17 holes and yeah. 
yeah, tied for the lead or in the lead after round one, and obviously yeah. we know what happened from there. But um, yeah, four wins already this year. Mm -hmm. If he can win another one this week, which obviously he can. Oh yeah. If he does, I mean, we're gonna be starting to starting to talk about. Right, it's not like he's lost form. I mean, he, and since Augusta, he went to Mexico and finished yeah. second. Yeah, that battle with Tony. So yep. it's not like he's, no. you know, lost his the form game or hasn't fallen rusty off. or anything yeah. like that. He did take a couple weeks off. I think he was off this week, and and um, mm -hmm. he played. Did he play Wells Fargo? I don't think he did. He and Scheffler did not. That's right. So. Yeah. So he's had a couple weeks off, so he should be fresh. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'd I'd be. Uh, You'd be bold to bet against them. Yeah, and then uh, so in looking at the course this week, and in a, a quick, quick, you know, kind of uh, period of research, if you will, mm -hmm. it seems like a lot of the um, you know experts, if you will, or the kind of the analysts of the game are putting an emphasis on driving the golf yeah. ball this week. Distance um, is what I'm hearing. Distance, and then well, and, and depending on how thick they make the rough, obviously accuracy is a premium. But if they um, if they make the rough really long, then the accuracy becomes even more of a premium. So um, that's where, you know, I kind of wanted to look at, you know, these, these, the strokes gained off the tee numbers yeah. um, on, on tour because you see, you know, even it goes back to like, you know, the, the, my, my example I like to use is the 2020 U.S. Open, the Bryson one. Yeah. That course Just, was tricked way out. Yeah. Um, it had no business being that tough. But yeah. basically the rough was so bad <clears throat> and it, was, it became a, distance contest Bob because gouge. it didn't matter if you hit it short or not. The ball was going to roll into the rough, yeah. and then you just had to deal with it. So yep. Bryson was the furthest up on every you hole. You might as well be 80 yards out versus 150. Right, yeah. right. So, um, But some names that are doing well off the tee this year. Scotty's number one on tour off the tee. Strokes game. That's scary. Cantlay's three. Um, you've got Hovland at six. Rory at seven. A couple other sleepers down here. Sung J M just won the Korean yep. PGA event over the weekend. He's 13th. He's he's on my radar this week. Yeah, I mean, keep your eye on. He's him. got a major championship game. It just hasn't quite yeah, come to form. He almost won Augusta a few years ago. He's one of those guys that you feel like should have mm -hmm. multiple like 10, 15 PJ Tour wins already. Like yeah. it seems he has like, been close. A few it times. seems like he contends. Week there was in that and stretch. It also could just seem like that because he plays every. He does at play one every point, week. He played yeah. every single yeah. week. Yeah. Before he before he had a residence, I think in the U.S. <laughs> right. he, he didn't just, have one for yeah. like his first two years on tour. Yeah, he was just just driving around playing some golf. Mm -hmm. Yeah, playing some good golf. Um, Rom is 16th, which is like a down year for him. Mm -hmm. He's usually a lead off the tee, top yep. 10. Um, Jason Day is uh, 25th. Finau's 24th. So where does Shoffley rank in there? That's a good question. Because I've got my eye on him this week too. He is 68th, right okay. above Ricky Fowler, 69th. So okay. there's, uh, and he's another one that, I mean, has the game to have yeah. have had a major. Well, by he's now. been he's been playing so good this year. I think like eight top tens. Yeah, something like that. So we've talked about already a few names, but as we can, we'll kind of close the the episode here. But um, maybe give the listeners, you know, maybe like a, a your your favorite 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 kind of. Um, popular pick, if you will, sort of the big names, and then maybe uh, a sleeper, someone that uh, maybe is being talked about a ton, or maybe someone that's you have to go down the list of, of players to find, but maybe yeah. one of those in each of those categories to look for this week. Man, um, favorite favorite, I've got to go. I've got to go. Rom. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't think there's a hole in his game. I don't um, think there is either. Yeah, I mean, as long as he drives it solid. I mean, his iron game is so good. Mm -hmm. You know he's going to have birdie chances, and if his putter cooperates, he's going to be he's going to be really hard to beat. Um, another one that I want to mention too. I don't know if you consider him a favorite is Victor Hovland. Mm -hmm. The way he, he drives, is kind of on the border there. Of the way of he the... drives the ball is, it's like you could compare him to to guys like Rory and, and Scotty. Maybe not quite as long, but accurate. Mm -hmm. Always and, working that baby fade. Oh man, so fun to watch. So yeah, if, if his putter can get hot for a week, it, he's for he's a couple gonna... of weeks in a row there. He had it in the on the first round anyway. Yeah, he had yeah. Augusta, and then mm -hmm. the following week at at the Heritage. Yeah, if he can keep that putter keep that putter hot for a week, he's gonna he's gonna win one of these things sooner or later. Okay. Um, sleeper, it's a tough one. There's so many guys. There's so many. Mm-hmm. Mm. And that's interesting. So, so I've got one 
sleeper. Yeah, let's hear yours. <clears throat> I got a sleeper, and it's Gary Woodland. Okay. So, and I like him because of the emphasis on driving this week. He's always been a really good driver of the ball. Um, it's one of those, I mean, he's, uh, there's a lot of guys on tour like this, but if he can have a, an above average putting week, doesn't he have to putt blazing hot? Just make it above average. He hits the ball well enough, tee to green on a course like this, that he'll be able to contend. Yeah, he's and pure. He's, he's been close at the PGA before. Yep. I believe the, um, the Brooks and Tiger showdown year, Gary was right there. I think you're right. Yep. Um, so he's one that, and he's also 10th on tour right now in strokes gained off the tee. Okay. So. Um, That's helpful. That he's won. Terrell, Terrell Hatton's maybe another who yeah. strong finish this week. Yeah, he's um, been playing good this this whole year too. Yeah. So, so there's a there's a few names. And yeah. I will. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm very excited for this tournament. And oh yeah. Like I mentioned about how every year this thing seems to deliver mm-hmm. in the entertainment category. So yeah. there's no reason not to think it's going to deliver once again this year. So. Oh yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it will. So, Mr. Pierce. Any other thoughts or takeaways or things to look for for the viewers and listeners before the major this weekend? Um, I would say keep your eye on keep your eye on John Rahm. Yeah. Keep your eye on Sung J M. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think Patrick Cantlay is gonna have a sneaky good week too. Yeah. I think well, he's uh, got Makaba on the bag now. Yeah. So yeah. He's be got. To watch. Uh, yeah. That's. I keep forgetting that. It's yeah. wild. Well, actually, LaCava caddied for Nelly. Yeah, I weekend. saw that, too. Um, he's just, he's having fun right now. Yeah, well, he it's said good for him. he yeah. just wants to caddy. Yeah, good for him. It's tough when Tiger is injured. So. Yeah. Um, well, all right, that'll wrap it up. Um, golfers, you know, you can subscribe. You can follow the podcast wherever you listen to it. And, of course, subscribe on the YouTube channel. Leave us a comment and tell us who you think is going to win the PGA Championship this week. We'll see if any of our picks match uh, who the winner is. Or maybe your pick will win this week. Uh, but Pierce, we'll do this again sometime. Yeah. Uh, I know if you're not reading the Sunday Swing every Monday, uh, you should. Pierce does a good job wrapping things up and yeah, and, check it out. Um, you know, making sure all the the key notes are in there. Yeah. So yeah, thanks for um, having me. Yeah, it's been a it pleasure. Was great stuff. Um, we'll do this again for sure. Sweet.